Welcome back to BWO Daily, your source for news in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling from you boys at Busted Wide Open. My name is Nick Howell. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. And news coming out of NXT after this massive weekend of WWE shows. We had TakeOver 30 and we had SummerSlam. And after all of this, we did hear that former champion, no longer the champion, Keith Lee, is going to be coming to Monday Night Raw mm. tonight. And the reason he's coming to Monday Night Raw is because he relinquished, well, not relinquished, not, a, not uh, he didn't intend to, he lost his NXT championship. Accidental one, relinquishment. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, unintentional relinquishment to Karrion Cross, oh. who's been gunning for him for a couple of months now. So Keith Lee dropped that title on Saturday night to Karrion Cross, But in that match, apparently, at one point, Keith Lee came at Karrion with a pretty nasty clothesline over by the ropes. And it separated Karrion Cross's shoulder. Oof. Lest anyone out there think that what they do is, is nice and soft and easy. You've got a 300-plus go pound guy in Keith Lee running at you and throwing an arm. It ain't going to feel good. And apparently, it, it is so much mass in Keith Lee. It actually separated Karrion Cross's arm legitimately from his shoulder. And he knew it happened at the time, but he gutted through the rest of the match because he wanted to show everybody that they had invested in the right guy. Uh, he said when it happened, it was like a choir of demons was singing in my shoulder. Uh, very uh, eloquent guy, by the way, Karrion Cross, Nick, in real life as well as uh, in character. And he, uh, he also admitted that it's not ballet. Uh, so that, unfortunately, I here we are. I wonder if that choir of demons was all singing, Bask in his glory! <laughs> <laughs> Either that or fall and pray. Uh, that right, was terrible. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so apparently today he's having an MRI to determine the full extent of the damage. Uh, he says that he's a solution-based thinker, not a pity-based thinker. He's going to be working his hardest to get back as soon as possible. Good. But he believes, before even seeing the MRI, that he will not miss significant time because of what he's heard about this kind of an injury. It is apparently technically a separated acromyoclavicular. Let me try that again. Acromyoclavicular, there we go, joint in his right shoulder. Uh, and he says that he's very intuitive about his own body, and he's pretty sure that he's, because he still has some range of motion, that he's going to be able to, uh, to heal up and get back to working on it very quickly. Uh, he also says that the most important thing for him is to show that he's worth investing in and that all the push he's got, everyone that, that's, that's, you know, he's, that's let him go over, uh, and made him look so big in NXT up until now because they built him like a monster. Yeah, He wants to show that uh, all of that wasn't for nothing. They didn't do it on some guy who was just going to go sit and eat popcorn on the sidelines. <laughs> um, he admitted it happened at the worst possible moment in the biggest match of his career, but that these kind of things don't happen when it's convenient, and so now it's time to prove all those things that he said. Right. Uh, who he was, how he, how he, what his work ethic is, etc. So... Yeah, Karrion Cross, uh, NXT champion, and immediately on the injury shelf. But mm. um, from what I understand, Nick, I mean, we've got some time before the next big pay-per-view. He doesn't have to see action. They can write around this, I think. Uh, this doesn't sound like a, a, a big deal where he's going to miss enough time that it's going to take away from his reign. No, and the beauty of takeovers is they're they're more spread out. It's not like every mm -hmm. month that like the main roster WWE, you're having a pay-per-view that you have to build towards. Like theory, yeah. I mean, the next one is going to be October, November. November, yeah, somewhere around Survivor Series, I'd imagine. Yeah, I war. Mean, it, I mean, I believe the next one is actually <gasps> War Games. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I think that they've got time for him to heal, um, and because you know, the way they've built him, they've built him like an absolute tank and a monster, and he doesn't have to defend this thing. He no. can just sit sit back and be like, you know, come at me. You all figure out who's who's bringing it to me. You can absolutely write him to not have a match until the next takeover, and it will just build this aura around him. And, so, and frankly, his build up to where he is now has most most of the heavy lifting uh, has been done by Scarlett, you know, logistically and going out and out to the ring and interacting with the uh, the competitors and things like that. This is the presentation of it uh, yeah. outside of the entrance has mostly been Scarlett. For the, so yeah. let her continue to, c to carry that workload. She's brilliant at it. She's been brilliant at it for years. Let her continue to do this and have him show up on the Tron with his big eyes from time to time <laughs> in that looming Wizard of Oz it, kind of yeah. way, right? And, and uh, that would work fine. I would love sure. to not see him 
for a long time, and you just have Scarlet causing chaos and causing just, problems. You just, you just sort of feel his shadow, if you will. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you think about his build to this match. He had a couple of squash matches. I think he only really had one legitimate match, and you could say that was the Dijak, Dijak match where he yeah. actually, you know, actually had to work a match and, and took damage and had to sell. Um, mm, Bronson you know, Reed gave him a run for his money for a second. And so did, well, so did, so did uh, Danny Birch, but not like Dijak where it was actually like a full, I felt like it was a full match. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then a little bit of backstage scuffling. But you can absolutely work around all of that, I yeah. think. So, yeah. uh, so fingers crossed. It, it it's should be. be it, should be <laughs> it should be fine. It should be fine. That's that's where we're leaving this at. Yeah. Uh, also, something that should be fine is the women's division in WWE, because Stephanie McMahon recently, actually over this weekend, uh, she had a uh, SummerSlam media call, and she was actually talking with Charlotte Wilder from Fox Sports, and she was talking about what they wanted to do with the women's division, and she said. They're actually working towards making absolute parity in WWE, meaning 50-50 rosters. So half men, half women on the WWE roster. She's already, she says that already it's become to the point where it's not a big deal when you have women's main events. Like they've, no. I mean, to, to extrapolate on her point here, it's actually not a big deal for most of the things because there's no more firsts. They have knocked down all of those firsts pretty much. First Hell in a Cell, first, miss, first Money in the Bank, which was a man. But we'll leave it at that. That's fine. Uh, so on and so forth. They've they've broken down a lot of those barriers, so now they can just get to the the uh, the next step, which is parity in WWE, and just having it be where you know people just don't even think about it. It's just a match, right? It's right. Just next on the card is a match. Um, and one of the reasons she said that they were able to do that is when Triple H started training these high level athletes, female athletes, they started getting more time. They started getting more reps. That gives them more confidence. That gives them more skill. That gives them uh, that you get better the more reps that you do. Right. So you start off with a certain level of quality. It's only going to get better and better and better because you're giving them more time. So it's it's going to be like a snowball effect. And I'm putting that those words in her mouth, but I but that seems to be the point she's trying to make as well. Yeah, is that things are going to continue to get better the more that you invest in them. So. Um, she said that she would love to see uh, equal number of men and women uh, represented. Uh, at times, that would ebb and flow, but she thinks that's very important. I agree. Uh, they also, I, I totally agree. She says they're also actively looking into hiring more women writers, which is smart because think about one of the best uh, female storylines we had in the last six months, which was the the Otis and Mandy storyline and Shonya Deville and just. Uh, it's whatever you think about where it went because they fired the the woman writer that uh, or, the, or furloughed or however you want to call it, uh, the woman writer who was working on that. But that was a really good storyline. Yeah, and that was that the it was not Mean Girls. It was not you know she's I called her fat and she's mad at me now. That was an interesting, unique storyline. It was an inversion uh, and, and sort of a satirical parody of. Uh, like a male storyline, him being attracted to a woman. So it was actually it was a really good storyline, and I, I agree with her. They <laughs> get some more women writers in there. Yeah, They'll bring up completely. Them. Stop firing that too. Uh, but that'll give a whole new perspective to a lot of things, including the men's angles. I think they'd bring a new perspective to the men's angles. Maybe we'd see less cuck angles if we had some women in there. Yeah. That just 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 spitballing here. Probably I don't not. Know. Vince I'm is crazy. obsessed with them. So. <laughs> uh, it's it's speculated whether that was Vince or Paul, but. Yeah, oh, good definitely. We'll see definitely, if they persist now because there's not any more excuse. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, now, uh, please. Bruce uh, has actually please, no actively more. spoken out against them on something to wrestle with. I believe in the past. Yeah, so. Bruce likes to wash his hands of things. He that's was, true. That's a good. He point. was deep in though. Come on, <laughs> believe a word it comes. I, I'd rather believe Chris Jericho anything he says. Oh, uh, also oh, the big the big news fired. here for me. I mean, <laughs> am I wrong? Uh, Jericho, yeah, Jericho. I, I would. I don't know. I wouldn't believe anything any of those guys say because they can't figure out whether they're at, they're on TV or not. So it's always a work. Yes. Work, work, always work, work. a work. Work, 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 work. All right. So she's also actively trying to get Evolution Two off the ground. Now that's this could just be lip service, uh, but she seemed to bring it up pretty much unprovoked. So. Uh, I would I would love to see if they could make that happen. I could build I your your right card now. with your active storylines in the women's divisions across the three brands today. Like yeah. it, it's not like it's some massive piece of thing that you have to execute on. 
It's just book a card and change the colors of the LED boards and give them a logo. But it's also making sure that there's room in the main, like the main storylines, to insert an Owens pay per view. Like you know, we don't sure. have anything for Drew and Randy right now. Okay, well let's let's we can they do we it can twice a year with Saudi Arabia. They can do it with the well, women's division. But the thing is, you want to make it mean something. You don't want it to be a women's house show, is what I'm saying. Uh, that's fair. So you know, you have to have all the other storylines be in a place where you can stretch them for two months or to the next pay per view, uh, if you're not going to have any men's storylines. You know that, that of course when I say that. Um, you know, it's 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 they do it all the time with the women where they just are like, okay, we're gonna stretch you out for two months because we're going to Saudi Arabia and we don't have any storylines for you, right? For that time, so basically, yeah, it's I I don't think I agree with you. I don't think it's the hardest thing to do, right? So just just do it. Just do it. Just you're, do you're it. You're WWE. Look at what yeah, you just did with Thunderdome and SummerSlam. It you just was, put it was out a, you just put out a 24 where you talked about how incredible it was that you made WrestleMania actually freaking happen <laughs> in the midst fantastic. of fantastic. Like, you had you had two weeks to get a no crowd WrestleMania off the ground, and we pulled it off because we're WWE. Well, it's do Evolution too. If you could pull rabbits out of hats. the first one oh. was in October. You got two months. <laughs> and then I think it's a two year anniversary. Right. So get her done. Yep. So Nick, that's it. But we do have to get out of here and wish some happy birthdays. It's, a, it's our Monday show, so we got all weekend. Luckily, I don't really have anybody on Sunday, but Saturday was, I think, everybody. You had uh, you had Stevie Ray, oh. who turned 62. Paul Ellering turned 67. The Usos both turned 35, as you would imagine. Pac, wherever the heck he is off being a Geordie bastard, it, he turned 34. Apollo Crews turned 33 and then got to retain his title, so pr- good for him. Nice. And then today, Shofunaki turned turned 62 indeed grand metal league turned 32 tino sabatelli turned 37 and hopefully he wasn't the mole that came to aew because if so we're never going to see him again we're never going to wish him happy birthday again but hopefully it wasn't him and if so happy birthday tino and finally nick it's time it's the big one we have to wish a happy 75th birthday 75th birthday to vincent kennedy McMahon. Mm. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Vince. <laughs> that is the news. Well, thank you, sir, Ian Dangerous. Happy birthday to all of those folks and the boss, Vince McMahon himself. I uh, mm. hope you guys all had a great, great holiday or uh, birthday weekend. Uh, we certainly did with SummerSlam and TakeOver 30. We were a little bit busy. So if you missed any of the shows, head over to Twitch. You can find us over there in all of the replays. Plus, you can find us any of our uh, shows where, and wherever you listen to podcasts or over at BWOPodcast.com. Make sure you subscribe here to the channel by pounding that big red subscribe button. Set your notifications to all uh, so because you get episodes of BWO Daily every day all throughout the week. And make sure you're following us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Slash busted wide open because we do go live every Tuesday and every Saturday uh, uh, all throughout the week. So you make sure you get those notifications by following us over there. Discord community, social media links, all of that stuff down in the description below. But my name is Nick Howell. You can find me on Twitter at Data Center Dude. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. You can find me on Twitter at Sir Ian Dangerous. And we will see you guys next time.